boom and we are here <laughs> hello james welcome to aws on air um pleasure to have you here thanks for having me happy to be here so james tell us who you are <laughs> and uh, why are you joining us today <laughs> Well, I'm a principal applied AI uh, solutions architect. And I work closely with the uh, personalized team and with customers that uh, are deploying Amazon Personalize. Um, I'm based out of uh, Napa, California. So um, yeah, just happy to share a really uh, exciting enhancement we just recently released uh, for Personalize. Excellent, excellent. So um, let's start with that, right? What are we launching? What is this thing that you have launched for? Um, is it Amazon Personalized or Amazon yeah. Personalized? Amazon Personalized, Zarko, learn your <laughs> service names. Amazon Personalized, what is the new thing that we're launching for this lovely service? Yeah, so we, um, we're continually listening to customers and, and what they're wanting to see out of the service. And so this, this enhancement adds the ability for customers to include product descriptions. So what we call unstructured text, which is uh, think of product descriptions or for movie recommendations, maybe it's a plot synopsis or uh, for news or blog based uh, content recommendations, it's the body of an article. So now you can include that text right in your data sets for personalize and personalize will um, extract features from that text that improve the relevancy of the recommendations that it produces. Okay. But, um, I think I think it's 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 fair to step back for a moment here um, and explain to the the chat what is Amazon Personalized? Why 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 should they use it? And or, you know what what is it for? Yeah, so uh, Personalize is one of the AI services. So in the in the AWS machine learning stack, the top layer is where the AI services live, and and those are designed for developers to um, incorporate or integrate uh, advanced machine learning based capabilities into their applications with no machine learning experience required. So Personalize is a fully managed service, and it allows you to create private recommenders, um, is what we refer to them. Basically, their their recommendation. Uh, endpoints that allow you to surface recommendations for different personalization use cases. So uh, the, the canonical personalization use case is like the recommended for you on, say, your homepage is okay. based on your past behavior. These are the items that we recommend to you. And items can be products, they can be videos, they can be articles, content. Uh, Personalize is agnostic to the industry so okay. um, that it's used within. And it's it it's built upon the learnings that Amazon has uh, has has um, learned over 20 plus years of doing personalization, starting on the retail side of the business, and of course we do personalization everywhere um, on Twitch, um, uh, Prime Video, um, you know, really you name it. We're doing personalization everywhere, and so this service really packages those learnings up into a service that any AWS customer can can leverage. So if I, if I hear you correctly, if I want to build my own TikTok and have my own For You page, um, I can do that using uh, Amazon Personalize. Exactly, exactly. As long as you have uh, an application that captures user behavior or intent or interest, um, often that's, that's either what's called implicit feedback or explicit, implicit being what I'm clicking on, what I'm engaging or you know um, watching is feedback that Personalize can learn from to then recommend uh, other other content or items or people that you might be interested in. And, uh, you know, I've actually, uh, a while ago, I spoke to a customer, I think just as Personalize launched, and they wanted to use Personalize. They, they felt like their website can benefit from it, right? They had like a website that would, um, I think, suggest articles and books and something like that to their audience. And they were in this midst of building a recommendation engine for themselves. And they're like, oh, this new thing launched. And basically, my understanding is that if you have a customer base, if you can track the behavior, the shopping habits, the, the whatever your customers do on your website, uh, personalize with the magic of machine learning um, will actually help you, well, help them pick the better things, right? Absolutely. Yep. And it's all about driving you know, deeper customer engagement, um, keeping users on your site or uh, repeating purchases back on your site, uh, it, making them feel more connected to your brand. Um, through you know understanding their interests and then recommending content or items that they'd be interested in, right, right. So, so let me ask: How long has uh, Amazon Personalize uh, been a uh, service? Uh, it's it, about three years. Um, so it was announced, I think, at reInvent in 2018, and it went uh, GA in 2019. 
Wow. And, and so what what all has been launched over that time period? Because I think I remember when it when it launched. I remember it was at that reInvent. I thought it was pretty cool. I took an initial look at it then, but you know, I haven't personally kept up to date on all the features. So anything that you could share uh, that was really cool has been launched over those past three years. Yeah, we've actually uh, done a lot to um, uh, add to the service and, and you know, you, sort of the AWS Amazon way is listening to our customers and building a roadmap around what customers are asking for. And one, one uh, area that, that comes to mind is we found when we initially launched the service, a lot of customers wanted to uh, post process recommendations coming out of the service before presenting them to their users to apply, say, like some business rule. Maybe you okay. don't want to recommend items that are out of stock, or you don't want to recommend a movie that the user just watched, right? And so these are sort of those, those non-machine learning type business rules that you want to apply, a lot like a SQL where clause when you, when you query a table and you want to constrain what's returned. Uh, so we design a feature called filters that allows customers to basically um, uh, design those those filters in a very SQL-like um, expression. And then those expressions are applied to recommendations before they're returned to you. So you don't have to layer that functionality on top of uh, on top of the service. Pretty cool. Another cool, oh, go ahead, Darko. Let us know what, what also cool is. And I'm going to ask you this later on because I, 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 want, I want to know as a user, how, how do I get into this? But do, do please do continue. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really, really cool stuff. That's why it's, it's exciting to talk about it. But uh, the, um, another area that, that we heard from customers is, okay, you, I'm, I'm training a machine learning model based on user behavior, how they're interacting with my items. But I have a catalog that changes frequently. I have items that I'm, are come and go out of my catalog. And I want to get those new items in front of my users that would be interesting to them based on other items that they've interacted with. And we refer to that as, as cold item recommendations, where a cold item is one that just it has no interaction history or no engagement, but it, it, it's still relevant to users based on other items that they've engaged with. And so we have a capability in personalized, um, that's, it's also referred to in machine learning as exploration versus exploitation. And exploration is the process of including those new items in front of users and start gathering feedback on their interest and then incorporating that into more recommendations as you go forward. And that's um, uh, a particularly important capability in, in recommendation systems and Personalize has that uh, built, built in and takes care of it for you automatically. That makes a lot. That makes a lot of sense. Like that brand new show, or even thinking. About, I always think back to TikTok when I think recommendation. Somebody just posted their video. We yep. need to figure out who's going to be interested in this as quickly as possible and get that trending. That it makes a lot of sense. Yep. Exactly. And and so as a user, right? Before we get into this actual new feature of it all, as a, as a, as a user, I have a website that sells something, right? And I how do, how do I by personalized, how do I plug it in? How, how does it actually work from a user perspective? Sorry, from a, well, yeah, from a developer perspective. Yeah, so we'll, I think we'll get into this um, in a demo here in a few minutes, okay. but, but you really, it, you start by bringing your data to the service and okay. the data is of three types. Uh, the first and most important data is interaction data or event data, okay. and that captures how your users are interacting with items. and. Uh, users and items are however you track them in your system. Some sort of unique ID most, most um, applications have. Right. And then the interactions can be product clicks, could be watching a, a video, could be adding to cart, purchasing, um, favoriting, whatever is specific to your application and your domain, you can capture those as event types. Gotcha. And then a timestamp of when that user performed that action. Because personal, one of the key capabilities of Personalize is it understands users' intent over time by stringing together, doing session-based modeling, because what you were interested in a week ago may be different than what you're looking, you're interested in now. Like what you're shopping for today is different than a week ago. And Personalize understands that by looking at that timestamp and capturing basically what what uh, what we would what's most relevant to recommend to you in the moment. Awesome, awesome. Now, so back. so if I understood earlier, the what you were saying was that there was a new capability too that now it understands how to read basically the text associated with the uh, with the product as well. Right, and so the other two data sets um, besides interactions that you, that you bring into Personalize is metadata about your items themselves. And up until this feature that was limited uh, for items was limited to um, what we call structured metadata, 
which would think of that like uh, categories for e-commerce or genre for video recommendations um, or maybe topical um, information for, for news articles. There was no way to bring in um, unstructured text into the service. Maybe you, you invest, uh, some companies invest a lot of time in their product descriptions so that they resonate to their users. And that those descriptions ha have a lot of um, uh, valuable information that uh, would be great to model on in the service. And so that's what this, this feature does is it allows you to bring that text into the service and then we apply uh, hosted natural language processing models against that, that text to extract the, those features, basically unlock them from your descriptions. Gotcha. Okay, so, so let's say like Star Wars had just been uploaded and nobody has watched it yet, but it reads through the text and it, it reads about, you know, uh, period of star, uh, civil wars, tyranny, galactic empire, Starfleet. So it understands certain things in that text and understands, okay, this is a sci-fi film. Mm -hmm. Let me start recommending it to people who are into sci-fi then. Exactly. Exactly. And so it'll, other sci-fi movies that have similar, uh, phrases and, and words and, um, topics, it'll, it'll draw those correlations between those other items and then recommend more relevant sci-fi in this case, sci-fi movies to you. That's there's awesome. A, there, there's a potential question here from, from Raj, uh, maybe not connected directly to this new feature, but uh, let me actually bring this up. So Raj asked, what's the duration the preferences are stored to provide some recommendations because I might develop new interests over time? How does this work? So to, to um, understand a user's interest over time, we'll take in the historical data uh, about uh, with the timestamp to understand their, their, uh, how their interests have varied over time. But okay. do you, it, as far as real time, you can also stream in interactions into the service directly in, it, it, and it'll learn from those interests in real time. And we'll adjust based on a new interaction being sent into the service. We'll start adjusting recommendations within a second or two. And so that's how quickly the service um, can pivot and adapt to your interests. Um, so it not only does it learn historical, but it adapts in real time. So, so it, does, it doesn't like, for example, if I spend the last two years enjoying Star Trek, right? And all of a sudden I've, I've changed my interest into My Little Pony. It, it automatically will know that I have new interests now. It will not balance it on the other side because it's just his historical it will start learning that i like this new these new kinds of shows uh, in the in the recent past and it will start uh, recommending those things right right and it will do that in a in a uh, a subtle sort of transition way so the the more if your tastes really do change and you cross over and you start um it'll, it'll start incorporating more i guess um animation for my little mm -hmm. pony or you know some yeah. cartoons <laughs> but in a gradual way it won't be a, a, a you know a major pivot um, it takes a few interactions for it to start, you know, um, truly dramatically changing those interactions. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, so this, this feature, right? So, uh, you know, reading this metadata, if you would like to explain what does this actually solve, right? So what kind of a problem does this solve? I understand this can read metadata. It can, you know, it can read unstructured text within mm -hmm. the metadata of your users or, or products or whatnot. What problem does it solve? What real life problem can this thing solve? Well, what it comes down to is is we're we're constantly working on making recommendations more and more relevant to to the user, and and relevancy is driven m most of the time based on your interactions, like what you've in interacted with. But in the absence of interactions, we we rely on metadata about the items, right? So if we just have a few interactions for with uh, for you about a about a user, we can use metadata similarity between items to start surfacing. Um, items based on the, the metadata similarities of other items you've interacted with. And I mentioned cold starting items earlier. And when you talk about relevancy of cold items, these descriptions really come into play. And we've seen it with particular data sets that this improves the accuracy of the model between 20 and 35% in some cases. So when you really, uh, you have an interaction data set that's more sparse, meaning you don't have as many interactions across your items or for users, that metadata you bring in for your items can really drive um, more relevant recommendations or the accuracy of the recommendations. Right. Cool. Um, James, do you want to show us some demo? Maybe maybe we can bring up a bring up a console or something like that, and uh, um, we can look into it and we can chat and talk about it as we go along. Sure. Sure. Let me uh, let me share my screen here. The infinite words words of twenty twenty one. Let me share my screen. Right. <laughs> um, 
So um, can you see that? Can you see my screen? Let me, let me bring it up. Um, we should be able to see your screen. We see an Excel file with a lot of things in it. Great. <laughs> well, what I, data here. what I wanted to start with is those three data sets that I mentioned. Um, I wanted to give you a, a I'm going to show you a demo application. It's an e-commerce um, storefront experience that we've built. Uh, that um, th I wanted to show you the the input data that we use it to create models and personalize for this storefront. So this is the interactions data set. I mentioned it has an item ID, a user okay. ID, an event type, and a timestamp, which is a Unix timestamp, which is the okay. number of seconds since the epic. And then this discount column, we'll just ignore that for, for now. So these are items that this this user has interacted with these two items. See, it's 3156, the same user. Yeah. And it was a product viewed event. So they clicked on a product detail page in this case. You'll see there's other um, events down here like cart uh, yeah. cart viewed and so on. And, and this, this, this data comes from a from that e-commerce platform, for example, right? So if right. if a, if an actual customer on that website looks at a product, this information comes as this into Personalize. Right. Yeah. So a lot of um, customers are collecting this data through analytics tools. Uh, maybe right. it's Google Analytics, or they're streaming it from their website uh, in real time back to AWS. Yeah. And you would you would take that data and manifest it in a CSV like you see here. The next data set is um, the items data set. And this is where that text comes into play. And so uh, you have to have an item ID to identify the item. And then you, you see two columns here that are structured metadata from before right. this new capability. This is how you would specify, say, category in an e-commerce and style um, uh, for this particular application. But now you see a description column here. And this is where that new feature comes in. So these are pretty short product descriptions. Um, right. it, in a real e-commerce application, you'd have something, uh, you'd have much, much longer and more rich descriptions. But um, in this case, you see how they're just brought into the CSV like your other fields that you have. And uh, you would strip them of HTML um, or any other white space formatting that you have. Just We just want the text um, in here. And so this is the, the items data set that we'll use to uh, train a model and personalize on. And then the third one is the user's data set. This one's very simple. It has a user ID, the age of the user, and their gender. You don't the this data set is optional. You don't have to have a user's data set, right. but but in this particular demo we do. And th does it help in this case? Like for example, if we have additional information on a, on a user, the gender, mm -hmm. does does personalize actually understand what gender in this case means or it just takes as as a data point and just runs with it? It, 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 it more takes it as a data point and runs with it. It doesn't understand what gender is, um, but it uses it as a feature in the model to better understand um, the, the behavior of your users. And so if you, if you have an e-commerce site that has, say, clothing um, you know, that, that is gender specific, then knowing the gender of your users can, can be relevant, right? Um, but in, in, in some applications, it's, it's not relevant. So it's okay. really understanding what, what fields or data points that you're gathering that can help improve the quality of those recommendations. And as we'll see, um, I'll show you the results of training a, a recommender and personalized with and without text. So you can see, um, you can measure the impact basically of introducing say different fields like gender or text and see how your model's improving or perhaps regressing. Um, so more data is not always better uh, when it comes to machine learning. Okay, got it, got it. So um, once you have those three data sets, then in Personalize, you import them into what's called a data set group. And so I'm showing you the Personalize console here uh, that will that is being used to drive the demo that I'm going to show you. And so within the data set group, you have th the three data set types. So we have the interactions, users, and items. And those are those CSVs that I mentioned um, that I just showed you in Excel. Those are imported into these data sets of each type. And you define your uh, data set structure in a schema that's in this JSON format here. This is Avro. We use the Avro specification to define the schemas. And where description comes in and where the, the unstructured text comes in is we have this description field, which was a header in the CSV that you, that you might recall. And then we have this textual of true. And this okay. is what tells Personalize that this is an unstructured text field, and it should apply the natural language processing to that to that field. The other two fields, category and style, are marked as categorical, 
meaning they could be one or more of a specific, a specific set of possible values. Okay. So once your data sets are, are in the service, you create what's called a solution and a solution version. That's where we actually train the model. And then uh, once the model's trained, you can create a campaign, which is the, um, I got to log back in here real quick. Um, a campaign, which is um, where you can, it's your, it's your own private API endpoint. It's an auto scaling endpoint that you can call to get recommendations uh, for one of those, for one of the models. Got it. Now, now I'm looking at these, you know, CSV files, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and you're you're importing them directly like this. In, in, in a real life, it's gonna this data should be streamed in to personalize. I understand, right? Or it, mm -hmm. it's personalized brings it in from somewhere else. Right. You can you can bring your data into personalize uh, two ways. You can bulk import your data. So this as a CSV, you would extract historical data, and then you would okay. bulk import it into the service, and then you can train a model and 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 go from there. Once you uh, have your models trained, you can shift to a streaming approach where you can stream new interactions. You can stream in new products um, in, into the items data set. That's that, how you'd introduce those cold items I mentioned earlier. And you can even stream in new users. And you can mix and match whether you stream or bulk import. You can use them together or um, separately. It makes sense that I would want to use them together because the faster I'm able to stream in new interaction data, yeah. the faster it'll react to things changing. Exactly, exactly. But some customers don't don't have the ability to um, to do that real time streaming, or maybe they can stream one of the data sets and not the others. And so you can mix and match those APIs, however it suits your application. Awesome, awesome. Uh, before we continue, uh, I just want to say hello, chat. Hi, how are you doing? I hope you are enjoying this live stream. Tell us right in the chat. Tell us if you are using any of the machine learning services for your product, for your online e-commerce store, for anything you're doing. Would a tool like Personalize help you and your customers? We really want to hear that. So make sure to put it in on the chat. And also, if you have any questions, uh, please do so. And also, hello, David. We have a new uh, interpreter here, David, all the way in the bottom. Welcome, David, and thank you very much for helping translate what we yap over here. James, OK, um, let's continue. Awesome. So, so uh, once we have these model tra models trained and personalized, we have this uh, e-commerce storefront that we call the Retail Demo Store, and it's available on GitHub under AWS Samples Retail Demo Store. So, the source code for everything I'm showing you here, even how you build personalize into a sort of a default e-commerce without personalization, we have a workshop that steps you through how to do all of these things with personalize step by step. And when you deploy this in your account, you get a storefront like this. Okay. And so we, we've loaded it with uh, uh, 2,400 different products across 17 categories. And we even created 6,000 fictitious shoppers in here um, that have different browsing behavior. And those are, well, that's what's depicted in those CSVs I showed you earlier. Uh, this application will then call to those uh, campaigns based on those, those machine learning models we created and personalized. And there's different user experiences that we have here in, in this application to demonstrate how you can use personalized different ways. Each of the shoppers, those 6,000 shoppers, have what we call a persona or what, what their interests are. And we generate interactions to train models and personalize based on that persona. So I'm emulating Susan here, and she's primarily interested in electronics, then outdoors, and then and finally footwear. And so you can see in this inspired by your shopping trends, this is your, the recommended for you uh, right. type of experience. You can see recommendations from the elect from electronics. Um, you can even see here's outdoors, some kayak and some um, some footwear products down here as well. They are also um, you know more more gender specific with these with these shoes here, um, tie, because we have gender tied to this product and to Susan as a profile. If I switch to another shopper, so it's it's um, really cool. You can you can pick a different shopper here based on different interests. So let's pick uh, I don't know housewares here. Okay. Confirm the shopper. So now I'm Shirley, and I'm interested in housewares, floral, and seasonal. And so you can see the recommendations are completely different for this uh, for this shopper because the interactions for the shopper are from be products from these other categories. Gotcha. So this is that, the. This makes so much sense. Uh, this kind of leads to a question I've always wondered though about about these algorithms. Let's say I bought one of these products and then I, I rated it to like one star. Uh, does does it also have the capability to understand sort of negative interactions of like 
they really hated this uh, centerpiece. Therefore, maybe don't recommend another centerpiece like it. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Uh, and and it's, that's an important point with personalized is it's based on positive intent. So we're looking to model on what users are interested in. And so if you do have a rating, uh, if you do capture rating product ratings for your users, then we, we recommend that customers to whatever, let's say it's a five-star rating and you consider anything a one or a two-star to be negative. And so you would exclude those interactions from uh, training and personalized because you don't want to recommend things that the user ha similar to what the user has um, disliked in the past. That makes sense. Or that could go back into that filtering mechanism you were talking about earl uh, earlier, where filter out at the end things that meet certain criteria, like they already purchased it or maybe they had rated something low right. uh, associated with that. Exactly. Okay. So this is the uh, user personalization um, use case that we see here at the top of the homepage. Down at the bottom, we have another UI widget here that, that displays featured products. And this uses another recipe in Personalize that we call Personalize Ranking, okay. where you can provide to Personalize a user and a list of items, and Personalize will re-rank them based on that user's interest. And so we see um, products here from floral and um, uh, housewares towards the front, but uh, products further down, sort of down the list are from other categories. And so you can personalize basically anytime you have a list of items, you can personalize the order of those uh, for, for your users. The last use case is similar item recommendations. And so uh, this is typically done on a product detail page like you see here, where uh, given an item, I wanna recommend similar items based on all user behavior. So this uses um, uh, item to item collaborative filtering is the approach that's used here. And so uh, based on all other user behavior, we're recommending other similar items to this item to help the user sort of refine their, their product selection. So this is where that uh, that NLP, that understanding of yeah. the uh, the text can come in, because this can actually understand this is a ceramic bowl. Therefore, this other uh, baking dish, even though it doesn't necessarily have ceramic in the title, may have ceramic in the body of the text. Uh, and so it can understand that these two things uh, actually match up with each other. Exactly, because you may not have ceramic in a in a in a structured field. For, for that item. Right. And yep, that's that's exactly exactly how that feature works. Wonderful, wonderful. Yep. I, I, you know, just the fact that it does use NLP or natural language processing, in this case, to un I understand what ceramic means and kind of place it with other things is, 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 is very, very, very great in this case. Um, we have a question here, actually a comment from uh, Mr. Ping52 on Twitch. Um, Mr. Ping says, um, why, oh, wait a second, let me move myself because we need David up, up front. One second, let me, Dave, hello, David, hi. Uh, I'm sorry, Nathan, I'm gonna move myself to the bottom. Like, there you go. Why doesn't Amazon use this? First of all, we don't know if Amazon uses this. Um, <laughs> I just bought a, frig a, fri a refrigerator, I probably don't want to buy another one again tomorrow. And here's a question for you, um, uh, James. Does Personalize actually take into account this information? Like if a customer has bought something, Will it offer the same product to them again? Yeah, that's a that's a great a great question, and I can actually demonstrate that. It's perfect timing here. So, uh, this this particular let me see. Let's go back to the homepage, and to make this easy to demonstrate, uh, here's that ceramic bowl with the uh, the green tomatoes and one red, one red tomato. So to simulate this, I'll go through the purchase process, add it to my cart. I'll simulate a checkout. Okay. Place my order. And so what's happening here behind the scenes is that the application has sent an order completed event back to personalize and we have a filter set up. Remember I mentioned filters where the SQL um, type type expressions where you can encode business rules. Yeah. I have a filter set up that says exclude recently purchased products from being recommended again to that user. And so now what we'll see when we go back to the homepage is that bowl is no longer in this recommendation set for this user. So that's that's an example of how you can use personalized with filters. So the, the recommendation model with filters to create that exact user experience that was um, that was being asked about. Awesome. And, and, and does this also work, for example, if and I may have missed it, if you mentioned this, for example, we create a new user. And does it also take into account something of that new user, like, um, let's say, a fictional retail store. And one of the mm -hmm. things you can do on a retail store as part of your account, for whatever reason, you can describe yourself. Right? <laughs> you can put like a, my name is Darko and I, jo I enjoy the outdoors and healthy living and whatnot, right? Uh, is it possible for personalized to take that data as well 
and based on the data it has read from a user, not from a product, to recommend products for me. A, yeah. a brand new user, zero interactions with anything. Right. It, so we do have, uh, the service does has the, have the ability, I mentioned cold starting items. Okay. We can cold start users as well. And so okay. rather than ask them um, uh, uh, what their interests are, the personalized can learn their interest in real time. And so I'll, I'll demonstrate this with okay. um, simulating a brand new cold user. And so I'm bringing up an incognito window in Chrome, which simulates a brand new session to this, to this demo website that the website has not seen before. And what you're seeing here is a splash screen that we always display when, when a user first hits the site. So this tells us that we're coming in cold as a user. Yes. I'm going to skip logging in. I'm going to skip a tour. We have a tour that, that is over the demo as well. And you can see I'm not signed in. So this is a cold user that that app has never seen. Personalized has never seen either. And so what we do in this case is instead of um, uh, products that uh, you may be interested in, because we don't know what you're interested in, we display trending products. And, and essentially what Personalize is doing when it doesn't know who the user is, or have any history of that user, is it recommends popular products. So let's, say all I, user behavior. so let's say I really need to go shopping for grocery items and that potato is like, potato is like catching my eye right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's click on that potato. And so what happened is we now streamed a product viewed event back to Personalize in real time. Right. Let's say, uh, oh, let's, uh, we're going to make something, we're going to make guacamole too, right? Right, so I need right. some avocados. Well, now look what happens when I go back to the homepage. Oh, wow. I say all food. All food. All good. Right? <laughs> and so just that quickly, Personalized has learned your interests without having to prompt you, hey, what are you looking for? What are your interests? Is just engage with the app and we'll learn it in real time. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, we have a question here from Asawari. As Asawari asks, does Personalized consider geographical influence while recommending? You can use um, location in what we call contextual recommendations. And so uh, we talked about metadata for items and for okay. users, right? And, and one of the metadata fields for items was the description. Well, you can also associate metadata with the interaction. So these, th this is data that's contextual to how I'm interacting with you. It could be something, what's the device type I'm using? Am I on my phone or in my browser, right? right. Um, am I using a kiosk application? I'm still the same person, but the context of how I'm interacting is different. And location can be one of those contextual signals is where I am, I, where am I currently, right? Uh, and that can be added as uh, contextual metadata to the interactions data set. You remember that discount column I said to yeah. ignore? Well, you could have location there as um, let's say a city or a region or a zip code you know, whatever is relevant to how, how you geographically um, are organized as a business. And Personalize will learn basically of, based on that context, what, would, what it would recommend based on that context. Right. Well, excellent. You know, you know, you can always take like somebody's location. Like I'm, I'm, I'm joining you from Serbia and many customers from the same region have bought this. So you can kind of, I guess, make a recommendation based off of that uh, as well to the audience. Remember, if you, if you are, if you're taking that data, data in, that's, that's very much important. Mm -hmm. There was a good question in the chat about uh, whether this can uh, interface with pinpoint, like how does this, does this apply to pinpoint? Could I use it to feed a list of recommendations and then send those out via pinpoint perhaps? Right. Yeah. One of the, the most common uses of personalization that we see with this, with the service is outbound messaging and how I, not only how users engage with my app, but I want to, in my emails I send, I want to include personalized recommendations in emails or push notifications or even text messages. And that's where using personalized together with pinpoint is a really powerful combination is pinpoint identifies who to contact, how to contact them and when to contact them and personalizes what to include in the message. Yeah. And you can use pinpoint and personalize together where when pinpoint is sending um, outbound messages or uh, executing a campaign, it can call these uh, pers in the personalized to get recommendations for each user. And then uh, through a Lambda function, you can uh, enrich those recommendations to include like these, these uh, um, image images for products here, the product name, price, any promotions you're doing. And so the two services work really well together. Awesome. Uh, there's also a question from Mean uh, asking, can it recommend based on seasonal products, for example? Yeah, see, seasonality uh, is definitely another is another contextual element. 
Um, we, we, a blog post was just published on how you can pull weather data even from uh, the Amazon data exchange and, and to be able to use weather to recommend say uh, uh, what the current weather is. Maybe I wanna, if it's raining, I wanna recommend jackets and umbrellas versus if you're say, you know, in a sunny climate, you're gonna recommend, you know, shorts and t-shirts and things like that. So um, uh, seasonality, is, is just another piece of context, even time of day, if you're a QSR, a quick service restaurant, yeah. uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Is what's the time of day of the user, it is what, what they're interested in for lunch versus dinner versus breakfast, is it can learn those interests and then recommend the, the targeted recommendations based on the current time of day. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I, I really do enjoy this. I, I, I said when I first saw Personalize, I saw that, oh, this solves a lot of problems if I would ever want to build a recommendation engine because now I don't have to. It's kind of it's kind of that. But um, a question. I am not a native English speaker. And if I have an audience which is not English, would this work for non-English language as well? So the, the first iteration of this feature is English only. Okay. Um, but you can use Amazon Translate with your if you have text in other languages you can translate it to english and then feed it into personalize uh, okay. we're also taking feedback from customers on what languages they'd like to see supported by this feature and i'm sure you'll you'll see other languages supported directly by yeah. the feature in the future so yes chat let us know let them let let james and the folks know as well if you want a specific language being supported with this feature on amazon personalize well excellent um so first of all uh if you want to check out this demo that James has showed, the retail store, it is actually available on open source. It's on GitHub. So if you want to check it out, you can go to github.com slash aws-samples slash retail demo store. Uh, you were, you're able to launch this for yourself, test out all the features, test all the cool things here, right? Yeah, I was on there playing around with it a little bit earlier and yeah. checking out, clicking around on different things. And it's really fun to play with, actually. <laughs> So go check yeah. it out. Go check it out. All right. So, James, thank you very much. We've today seen this great new feature from a great service. So Amazon Personalized enables you to use the power of machine learning to give specific recommendations to your customers, to people who visit your product, use your buy things off your website, watch films and movies off, off your, off your, off your streaming platform. But on top of that, this new feature, which actually takes unstructured text as part of metadata and help you give even better recommendations to new products, to new users, so-called cold start recommendations. Is that the correct? Mm -hmm. one? Yep. You got it. There we go. So is there anything that you would tell this, the wonderful chat here? What should they do right now? Is it this or is, should they go somewhere else? Well, the, the demo is definitely a great way to see the, the service in action. Uh, we have also on, on GitHub under AWS samples, we have Amazon personalized samples, which has a collection of uh, solutions and notebooks that go into much more detail than what I showed you here uh, in the retail demo store that allows you to really get hands-on experience with the service. Um, the developer documentation um, as well. We have a YouTube video series that does a deep dive on various capabilities of the service. And we'll be adding some more videos um, to that series this month. And so there's a lot of great content out there, um, but uh, it's a real easy service to get up and going with. Within a few hours, you can have your own recommendation system um, up and going with your own data. Excellent. That's amazing to hear because I've had to code a couple of these before in the past for social media websites, and it took me weeks to get it working right. And to hear that I could get this working in, in hours, that's that's a game changer, especially for small startups, I think. Yep. Yeah. D don't focus on the thing that doesn't make your product that much better. If there's exactly. things you can, you can make it work, right? So uh, I think this is one of those stories. So James, thank you for the wonderful demo. Thank you for being part of this AWS on air.